the teams live from Webster Timber Lanes in Abington. Introducing your two teams. On one side, Josh Daly, Ed Woodside, and Dave Barber. And on the other, Nick Zaffalato, Jeff Walsh, and Sean Baker. Good luck, everybody. One string competition to determine the winner. <laughs> one string total pinfall, three on three. And we're pleased that you're watching here live on Candlepin Bowling Network. My name is Greg Guyar. I've been joined alongside throughout our coverage by Bob Lee, our executive producer. Thrilled to be with you here. So today, we started with a five-string uh, qualifier to give us the top 24 out of a field of about 50 or so. And after all that, in a tense showdown between Ryan Drago and A.J. Stockton, we had our top 24. And I'll tell you more about the format in just a second. That's Nick Zuffalotti you see on the right side, starting off. Nicknamed Freshie. Josh Daly on your left side. Big thunderous hit to start. Good sticks for Freshie, nothing doing. And for those of you watching Candlepin for the first time in this final competition, we're very pleased to have you here. Scores the same as big ball, except you get three small balls instead of two big ones. Much tougher than it looks. And any pins on the plate stay on the plate and can be used as live wood. Which adds an infinite amount of possibilities in this game, and that's why we love it here in Northeast North America. Ten and a nine to start. Ten boxes to determine the winner of this competition. Previous winners were Justin Lyonnais last year, Craig Holbrook, and Lou Gacharna. Josh Daly punches out the two pin and the eight pin. That's the half Worcester. What a big chop! The 5-7-9 goes for Zuffalato, and that gets everyone going. Daly put a good bit on that as well, but nothing doing. See that side-to-side -side pin action required, the sidewall utilization, and Daly escapes with 10 after that. Strikes and spares are rare. It's those pins in the third ball that can be essential to success. But right now, Zuffalotto with a chance to go 10 plus a ball in the second frame. Let's see how much he can load up this spare with. Just two. Half Worcester right side. Comes up scratching his head off camera. Daily monstrous hit, that's nine. Stuffalotto <laughs> crossed over on his hit. Daily spares. Single pinner goes, and that's the first mark for that side. So the team of Daly, Woodside, and Barber. Freshie escapes for eight. He's been fighting the pins all day and doing very well with it, all told. Looking for his first bona fide leaf. Josh Daly finished 19th with a 581, 129, 122, 123, 97, and 110. Here's his fill. Two, and again, the half Worcester showing itself. They tend to happen often in these matches, but not usually this often. There's nasty wood in front for Nick Zuffalato. This is a tough game. You can see immediately because of that obstacle. Wood doesn't always help, and he carries it through. Finesse required to get the pins to cooperate, and the 2-5 drops. Daly's got the five pin hiding back there. And, oh, hit the wood behind, and nothing goes, so only six. miles per hour in the, on that last series. Freshie was throwing 35 and 34 miles an hour on that last series. Thank you, Bob. Zuffalato had a 588 in qualifying in 18th place. 102, 126, 103, 141, and 116. 
He gets up to 48 through four with that spare drop of eight. Daly, that drops eventually for him, an accurate shot delivers. Split for Zaffalotto to contend with, can't pick it up this time. One miracle's all you get, I suppose. Daly again! Converting both of his good leaves. One string to decide it all. Zaffalotto gets his 10. So he only left two pins standing in his three open frames. Daly left five standing in his three open frames. But a spare, a chance to bring the margin back. Give you the lay of the land here. You see the three-man teams on your screen. And another half Worcester. Walsh this time. Woodside. Seven. Didn't look like a bad hit. I didn't think he crossed over, but the five pin remains. Into the hole. Big out coming up. Walsh goes the other half Worcester and it's four. So Ed Woodside gains five pins on the spot. You see the power of the third ball straight away. Check mark right side for Walsh. Woodside accurate again. He's got to leave. Two, four, and seven. Keeping track of head pin hit statistics as well. Just wide of the check mark. Woodside carries. Yes, off the wall. Two, four, sidewall, seven. See you later. Even spares are big in this game. Good out. Couple of shout outs I want to give. One to Mike Sweeney, AKA Wolfman12395 on YouTube, who's been going tremendously viral with his videos. He's suddenly just re uploading some of his old shows of the flagship Channel 5 program as we're getting a few hundred thousand views and a lot of curious people. Woodside, spare fill. So, congratulations to Wolfman12395. I want to encourage anyone who hasn't had the chance yet to subscribe. What side got five on the head pin? I'm brutal. Two seven converts. Small split conversion. What side two accurate shots but needs an out. It's a good one. The wood's gonna roll but in front and give him an eight. Put everything on the board here. Gregory. Remember, we still have that spare working for Josh Daly, so it's one mark each, and it is a three pin matchup with a ball at peace. Another shout out also to Danny Finn, uh, Kate Finn, Kerry, all of whom are doing great work with the TikTok stream suddenly. Candlepin Bowling on TikTok. And the viewership on that is tremendous as well. It's been creating a lot of uh, buzz for the game and a uh, great way to answer a lot of questions as well. As Walsh gets a seven fill. And a, I thought another, but the three pin betrays him. One side, a brilliant split. Two, four, seven, six. And the mark status flips around. that on my screen here. <laughs> Jeff Walsh had a 618 in qualifying in 10th place. One side drops eight, 50 through four. 
Walsh's 618 was a 150, a 93, a 134, a 111, and a 130. He does not spare. He... In hiding back there, Woods, the helicopter's not going to come across. Walsh out for 10 and Woodside out for 10 and all level there. Unbelievable, he was 12 out of 13. You know, he only missed one, one, one of the pins he was aiming for at Woodside. That 60. He got uh, he all three on that eight and then uh, all three again on that 10. Harsh game sometimes. Dave Barber on your left, Sean Baker on your right. Baker with a thunderous start. How the nine pin withstood all that is beyond me. Barber, diamond. Slightly thin on the head pin, I suppose. Baker converts. Single pins are not a gimme in this game, but relatively simple for the sponge. That's a big swing against Barber, who does convert the nine at least. I'm remiss in mentioning Ed Woodside's total from earlier. He qualified 16th with a 594. 133, 137, 108, 101, and a 115. Baker. Head pin. Yay, yay, yay. 4, 7, 9, 10. Wood in front maybe is salvation. Where have we seen that before? Dave Barber, uh, 2, 4, 5, triangle 2. So Baker a mystifying six on his spare fill. Here it comes, has to spin the wood somehow. Left oh! side! How does he do it? What cheat code did he enable? Barber puts a bit on it and the five pin won't go. Sean Baker qualified with a 634, doubtless with some magic like that. We saw that 5-7-10 in one of our teasers earlier in the broadcast. Good resilient 10 for Barber. Bar Baker at 130, 131, 117, 110, and 146. Dave Barber qualified second behind Tim Douglas. Barber had a 124, 123, 136, 125, and 155. The spare fill is six. Back to back 16s. Excuse me, head pin, you were hit, but Parker, Barber ends up with a spread eagle with some wood hanging around in the back. Baker can't go. That was brutal. I smushed Barber and Baker together to make Barker. Barker, <laughs> huh? Bob Barker, if you're listening by any chance, hi. Well, shave Barker. <laughs> a 10 apiece, good pinning throughout. Keeping this tight match That's what my intact. Do to their poodle. <laughs> Remember, there's a spare working on Josh Daly's side, so that 14 pin gap is deceptive. <laughs> I may have the wrong score up here somehow. I'm missing a pin for Sean Baker, 43. That's correct. <laughs> Scores are now correct as you see it on your screen. Sean Baker, there's an eight pin hiding as well, so the side saddle triangle will not go. Chester Cove special for Barber. Just left. Suppose so. All right, double wood. Baker does very well to collect that. It's trickier than it looks to collect the pins. Easy on a full rack, as they say. Pickup of two in the process. Lead is 17. That's correct. One ball coming for uh, Josh Daly on the board. That's right, Bob, one ball coming. That pin is seven. Well, I have a chance to read down the top eight. We had Tim Douglas, Dave Barber, Justin Waters, Danny Harris, Sean Baker, Corey Packard, Keith Beaupre, and Tim Jalbert rounding out the top eight. 
So they formed one member of each team. The middle eight finish. Formed the members of another team. Great spare by Baker. And Barber responds in kind. Let's bring up the scores as I continue that explanation. They will switch lanes here to keep things fair and square. So the top eight, middle eight, and bottom eight went into several raffle baskets, and then the teams were comprised of one member from each bracket. One top eight bowler, one middle eight bowler, and one bottom eight bowler. So these teams have all been assembled by chance, and some got to bowl with good friends throughout, and it's always a great community here in Candlepin Bowling. You see the reactions to the live drawing also here on Candlepin Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. This is Josh Daly on that spare. He's been sitting on it for a while, and he delivers eight with the eight pin hiding back there. All right, so the lead is nine now, and uh, both teams have a spare uh, among those anchor bowlers. Difference of a mark. Zuffel Otto is wondering how in the world he only took out four despite the head pin hit. Perhaps he crossed over. I missed the angle. Daly goes straight back. A bit of wood to help, but accurate nonetheless. Above all. Zuffel Otto again accurate and again mystifying non-action from the pins. One string to decide it all. Remember, box in hand, so Zuffalato is going to get at least eight out of this. Keep it eight. So, an immediate two pin pickup there. And you see the gap narrowing with a mark in hand, so Josh Daly has a chance now to virtually tie this match. One more remaining shout out I want to give to Autumn Mawary and uh, Demandos, the, the sole proprietor, as far as I could tell, of that Ellsworth Main Bowling Center. She's inherited a lot of aged equipment and she's done very well with it. And she just had an article in NPR. What a strike by Daly. Thunderous. No sidewall action or anything on that 45 mile an hour heater. Thanks, Bob Lee, with the radar gun. Zuffalato responded with a similarly explosive ball. What does he have to do? So. So an NPR article featured Autumn Awareness Demanda's Bowling Center. If you have the chance to check it out in Ellsworth, Maine, some patience is required with the old equipment, but I tell you, it's a fantastic story of uh, one owner's resilience to keep Candlepin Bowling on the map, especially up there in Maine. We always appreciate Maine and Eastern Canada. Even though we're based here in Massachusetts at Candlepin Bowling Network, we appreciate you all. And if you haven't had the chance to check out the NPR article, you definitely should. It came out just today. <laughs> 10 bucks for Zuffalato, 76 through 7. And Tim Schalbert is giving him the business for some reason. We have a lead change. Yes, we do. House of Strike. Daly hit the head pin too full. Second ball coming up. All right, Freshie, let's go, bud. That's Sean Baker shouting encouragement. Here he comes. Head pin, he's full in the three, four, six. Second ball daily. Too wide, but got six. That's the sort of ball where an explosive hit could have done nine. Nothing doing. So the gap is nine right now, mark apiece. Still within that mark, basically. And a great out by Daly off the wall. Tremendous. Every pin could matter in a match this tight. Zuffalato does well to get nine. The lead is 10 by my count. Indeed, mark a piece. Pinning is relatively level. 11 pins lost by uh, Team Dave Barber, highlighted in green on our screens, and 12 pins lost by Team Sean Baker, highlighted in red on our screens. 1, 2, 4, 10. Freshy, Nick Zuffalato. Nothing hiding back there. 1, 2, 10 is not impossible. Nor is this for Daly. Similar slice required. Daly does not get it. Zuffalato. Just wide, headpin tips anyway. Not into the wood. 
Clearly trying to split the difference, excuse me. How did that not get anything? Eight, 109 through nine. Precious got that, that's fair and good, 95. Eight pin match. And we've seen many times, Bob, how a bonus ball each can still have a, more volatility, more standard deviation, so on and so some such. That's a thunderous sidewall action, and Josh Daly. The one was the last to fall. Who, post, who posted a video teasing Charlie Collins for a triple strike punctuated by a back door. That was at Sunnyside. And now Daly gets one of his own. I never have to Zuffalato's got a wacky spare try. Two, four, six, seven, nine, ten. Here it comes. Not on the object. Needs an out here. This will be tricky. He has a safe option to his right available. We'll see if he goes with it. We'll update stats in just a moment. Yep, he does go the prudent route and gets a safe eight out of that for a 103. Put the scores on our screen. And I will let you know, folks, that the current statistics, two strikes and six spares for Daly, Woodside, and Barber. Six spares in total for Zuffalato, Walsh, and Baker. You see the mark in hand, and Daly filling the strike right now. Here it comes. Had been hit. Not a double. Good hit, though. Three, four, six for the remaining pins in the 10th. <laughs> Pinning again within one, so it's really the marks making the difference at the current moment. The fill is eight, and the string is 127 for Josh Daly in the finals. Greg Guillard, Bob Lee, Candlepin Bowling Network here at Webster Timber Lanes in Abington, Massachusetts. What started as a crowded field of 50 individuals became a team of a field of eight teams, and now down to these final two. Lanes have switched, remember. Ed Woodside is on your right, and Jeff Walsh on your left. He's got the head pin and six. Walsh. Just three. Woodside, now he only got one, but he was very close to slicing that two pin across, which would have been an amazing shot. Walsh is big, good sticks, no mark. Woodside again going the prudent route, although it doesn't collect nine, it collects eight. And Walsh picks up two just like that. The gap is 16. One string to decide it all. We're going down the stretch. Woodside, five, nine. Walsh yanked it left. Picked out three. This hits the object and Woodside does not pick it up. Often they say on the two pinners aim for the object, it usually misses one way or another. Just a case of too accurate for Woodside and Walsh with a thunderous reply, but also comes up without a mark. Walsh picks a pin up here. 15 is that? So the lead is indeed 15 in favor of Daly, Woodside, and Barber. That's the third straight 10 box for Jeff Walsh. Woodside, big time! A strike in the eighth. His third mark. Walsh with a thunderous hit on the head pin too, but it's too full. See both of these bowlers in the Friday Night Pro League. Walsh with Riverside at Amesbury and Ed Woodside with Central Park Lanes East Boston. <laughs> yes, that's a quality 10. Fourth straight 10. Walsh well, disappointed to only have 80 through 8, but he's yeah, keeping pins. He's going to bring that lead under, under 10 with a fill of 5 or more. we got to expect uh, 8 or more out of that from a pro bowler. 8.1 average strike fill. Here it comes. Woodside got a huge hit. Did he tip it all? The 4-pin will not go. 
nine on the first. Walsh, decent action. This will be a difficult slice. One, two, seven, ten. What's oh, I collect? Spare on strike. One, two, seven, ten, and the wood goes. A, a little love tap from the wood into the ten. And Jeff Walsh breaks through. He had one mark previously. The gap is 25. Lots of marks all over the place. Here's Woodside's. Head pin, six. Walsh got it in pocket brilliantly. Four pin stands up. Strikes are rare in this game. That was nothing to criticize about that ball. Woodside, good hit, but the 10 has nothing come its way. Walsh gets the single. That was a clutch moment. A lot of pressure riding on that shot. And he picks it up against Woodside's 10. No mark. Woodside checks out with 123. Walsh is 109 and a ball. Gap is 22 minus this. Head pin, the fill is high, and the deficit is 14. Let's get a lay of the land. We are going down to the final five boxes, folks. Please like this video if you've been liking it. Share this video. We're in for a good one. Both on spare fills. Barber's got six. Baker head pin. He crossed over a bit, but got good action. That's nine. 72 half. Baker, big mark. He's got it, and this match tightens up. And immediately, three pins left standing by Barber. Here we go, folks. So just like that, I'm confirming my score. 127, 123. Yep. It was a monster spare. Three pins left standing. For the lead. Good count, it's close. There you see it. Two. Two. it the gap is two. I dare not say it out loud. I do not want them to hear me. But we're on a tightrope now. Here we go. Barber missed the head pick. Baker, spare try, hit the cap of the wood and it doesn't go. Needed to be right on that. And he teases himself a bit over it. Barber got 10. Well, now we're gonna come down to the razor margins here. Baker needs this, it's accurate. 10 box. The gap remains two, excuse me, I need to answer this incorrectly. That's better. Yep, the gap remains two. The pinning gap is five. Zuffalotto, Walsh, and Baker have left five fewer pins standing, and that is creating the difference right now. 14 to 19. Here's Barber, head pin. 2, 4, 6, 10. You see one? Uh... Oh, yep, yeah, we have a score correction. It is a one pin match, excuse me. Look at this pin go! So major score correction, folks. It is a one-pin match. Barber did not collect, nor Baker. We're going down to the final two boxes. Baker needs these pins. That's the only thing I will say. Yep. Against a Barber 10. Baker gets it. A slice is beautiful, even though it only results in nine. The gap is two if I'm doing my count correctly. Thank you. 
328. Yep. <laughs> Diamond, if nothing top ips for Barber. We're coming down to the nitty gritty, folks. Two boxes to go. Baker's hit. The five pin is there. He actually doesn't hate it because the wood is nestled between the five and the eight. And that's why you saw the traffic direction. Barber, back oh. pin goes! Baker just missed! Is that the moment? We still have one box after this. The out is too bad. He was on the object pin, but didn't carry the wood. And it's seven. If the fill is at least six, Baker requires a double. It's one! They lead by a little. Baker could use this mark here. He's got a good washout. One, two, seven. I'm confirming a million times over. I have the score correct. Here's Barber trying to mix the pins together. Six tips. Four does not. Baker needs this. In the worst way, he's got it. Baker goes 11. Barber does not get the pin. It is nine. He checks out with 100. I see, I see five. Five size is mm -hmm. You see it on your screen, folks. Six to win. He missed like a seven. It's a two pin win for Zaffalato, Walsh, and Baker. And folks, that brings this match to an end. Nick Zuffalotto, Jeff Walsh, and Sean Baker, your winners by two pins. Josh Daly, Ed Woodside, and Dave Barber, valiant runners up with 350. You see the scores on your screen. The score statistics, three strikes and eight spares for Daly, Woodside, and Barber. Just the 10 spares and zero strikes for Zuffalotto, Walsh, and Baker. It was, in fact, the pinning itself. 18 pins left standing for Zuffalotta, Walsh, and Baker, and 20 pins left standing for Daly, Woodside, and Barber. Bob Lee, do you have anything else to say at this what point? What a day. What a day. That was incredibly dramatic. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, all, all our, our watchers. We'll see you on the lanes. Sounds good. I know I'll be hitting them myself. What a great game of Candlepin Bowling. All right. Without further ado, let's do the outro here. My name is Greg Guillaume alongside Bob Lee. Thank you very much for watching this presentation of Candlepin Bowling Network, headed by the stars of our show, these great bowlers. And until next...